Before the success stories, the progress, there was you. You who made a choice to grow, to inspire, to overcome your own challenges. At NASM, we're in service of your limitless potential because when you keep growing, we all get stronger and we'll never stop making your journey our mission. Join the fitness leader. Become a fitness leader. Become a certified personal trainer. You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today I want to talk about group personal training. I've had one of these episodes before about group exercise. So doing group fitness, I think, is a really great opportunity for personal trainers, and I think that's something you should consider. But there's a big difference between group fitness and this kind of uh, group personal training. And if you're a personal trainer, you may be far more interested in group personal training than kind of the traditional group fitness. So what are the differences between these two? And I'm going to start with this. So the, there's some drawbacks to traditional group fitness, especially for personal trainers. One is that they tend to be pre-choreographed. And it's not that you wouldn't plan your session out as a personal trainer in a group session. It's just that no matter really what's going on, you still move forward because it is a plan. A lot of times, group fitness isn't systematic, it's not progressive, but when you sign up for group personal training, you sign up for a 10-week program, and that program is designed to progress somebody systematically from this to this, and that might be kettlebell swings, and or excuse me, it might be you know a 10-week group personal uh, training kettlebell class. Well, Everybody has a different starting point, but this is where we're starting. It's one-on-one, or it's like one-on-one, but it could be a group, and it could be different numbers of people in there, which we'll get into, but you work through the system, and so you might start with, this is my beginner group, or you might have an advanced one that you still progress people through, but you follow progressions. Um, There are no assessments generally in group fitness, but when it comes to group personal training, I think it's not only an assessment that is included, but that you are also easier in smaller groups to make assessments and then to stop and to make change. And oftentimes, group fitness doesn't include communication, coaching, business, and branding strategies that I think are very important on what you need to do in uh, personal training and then how to build your business in personal training. So let me start with this and why I think group personal training is important and how it's different. And I think about it this way. So throughout my youth and even today, I have been engaged in martial arts. So I do martial arts training, martial arts um, early on. Like just think about doing this martial class where it's maybe it's karate or kung fu or you're doing a kimpo, whatever this martial art is, or even dance. Think about it this way. There are dance classes that are very, very focused on dance, and there are dance classes that are very focused on technique and what it is that you need to do with your technique. So let's use today, for example, I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Now, that's not something that I used to do. I started it a few years ago, and it's interesting because I like it where you go through and you practice something, but then the coaches break it down. And they break it down very specifically. And then you'll drill it. And as you drill, they walk around and they're identifying what needs to be worked on in the group. And some people are crushing it and some people are not. And guess what? Everybody stops. Everybody listens. Even the people who are crushing it. Even the people that are doing great. But everybody stops and hears these are the mistakes a lot of people make. These are the solutions. And then once we work on that, we'll work on a progression. Well, even the people who are experienced need to be familiar with that to better understand what it is that they're going to work with because they're going to be working together with somebody. So it is like 
a martial arts class. A martial arts class is like group personal training. So then they go through and then the experienced people raise their hand and they go, well, what if they do this? The, I, this is how I would respond to that. And then they go, great. Then they pull everybody back together as a group and say, this was brought up by so-and-so. And I think this is a good thing to be aware of. And this is how you would handle that situation. Or we will address this tomorrow when you come back to class. Hint, hint, when you come back to class tomorrow is also baiting them to ensure that if you want to know what's next, you got to come back. So I like to think of like martial arts classes like that as group personal training classes. Cause I think in, in a way they are far closer to a group personal training than they are to like a group fitness class. But when you look at these things, it is more than just generalized feedback. It is more than just general cues and adjustments. Group personal training moves through the workouts with specifics and they stop and they make adjustments and they show the group what to look for in themselves while answering questions from other attendees in that group. And I think that that's important to point out. Now, there are several things I need you to consider in group personal training. Number one, if you're going to go group training, it is not just standing there next to one client. So you need to be loud. You got to speak up. Uh, number two, uh, it, it is not a loquacious experience. I think that one of the drawbacks that we see a lot of times in group is that somebody up there teaching the class can get pretty verbose and then you lose what it is that you're trying to do. So keep the, the phrases concise, minimize the over explanation of a lot of things. And now again, I'm not talking about martial arts, so you got to do whatever you're doing in that. But as you're working through things, I know that as you experience this, a lot of times learning comes from doing and then additional learning comes from refinement. So if all you do is teach something, you did it a little wrong, stop everybody, do it exactly the way I said, go again, say, oh, it's a little bit wrong. I told you that's not how the kettlebell swings. You're supposed to let the kettlebell drop a little bit and then let you swing forward. And then it's supposed to be high up in the triangle and now it's too low and you did and engaging and, and it is so many cues Nobody knows what they're supposed to do. They don't know what's important. And it's too many things to think about all at once. And what you're not doing in it is giving them a chance to learn on their own. So give them the freedom to move and be very specific with this is the one or two things that I want you to focus on in this moment. And you'll practice that. And then as long as we're being safe, right, let's then address the next thing because you are piece by piece breaking down what is important, not just in general, but specifically to this group as you're watching everybody move. Number three, you need to be aware at all times. You got to watch people. You need to see what's going on. You need to see when there are tweaks to form being made. There can be a group. There can be times where you just go up to a single person and have that conversation. But do not, do not, do not be afraid to stop the group point out something uh, and say, this is how we would fix this. And this is how I want it cued if you start to see this in yourself. Uh, I think it's important that you also, um, anything that you are showing what to do, that you can do it. I don't like it when people are giving examples of what to do, but then you are not doing a very good job showing it. So you need to be proficient in what the request is. You should not be teaching a group class of something that you do not know, that you are not um, experienced in some level of expertise as you go into it. Um, basically don't ask your clients to do something that that you can't do. And then you got to be flexible because you might go in, here's my regiment, here's what I want, this is what I'd like to see happen. And when you get there, you realize that that doesn't make sense and it doesn't make sense for the group. It was a progression I thought we could make and it, they're not ready yet. Or um, I was going to not move forward beyond this, but it seems that everybody's doing this really well. So let's start adding in something. So be flexible. And in order to, to be flexible, you really just have to be prepared all around. So I think that's good, but I'm going to point out another example. Here's an example of why I think group training and the small group training and small group personal training. I like the idea of adding personal training into it because it makes you realize that you can stop everybody and coach like in a, in a, in football or a, a soccer or baseball, 
there are times where everybody's doing everything right except one person. And it is okay. They still stop and they say, okay, this is what we're seeing. We're going to go back and we're going to work on this because I want to see everybody succeed. And it doesn't matter that you have to do it again because that's part of your training anyway. I don't want to do more push-ups. Well, do more push-ups because that's what you were doing. And now we're just going to refine it and we're going to do it again. And you're still going to get better at it. So don't be afraid to stop the group and rehearse something, practice something. Um, when it comes to group training, I think there's something important I want to point out. I think the one thing I want to point out is the first time I was really introduced to group training is a guy that used to, to train at one of my gyms. And, you know, he, he charged quite a bit for personal training and he charged quite a bit for group training. So his personal training rate was like 150 bucks. So he was, he was way up there with his group. Uh, with his personal training, but with his group training, he charged $75 for a single person to come in. And he usually had three to four people that came in. Well, he's making more money doing the group personal training. We'll say, Rick, hey, listen, I'm not, I'm not charging that much. Well, you know, if the gym is charging $100, but the gym, as you talk to the gym and say, hey, let's really think about incorporating group classes. I see so many people going off to boutique and doing boutique workouts, and they're paying $25 to $30 for these boutique classes. And we can get groups of five, six, seven, eight people and do a group personal training, and we charge them $25. Then they are coming in, and now we're making almost $200 in a session versus $100. Well, that's better for me as a personal trainer. That is better for the business that's charging more. That is better for the people because you are now getting more people involved in your fitness experience. And it is a lower price point for the people. So it's better financially, basically for everybody that's involved. Well, there are different types of group personal training that you can do. They're shared, there's partner, and I, I call it partner training uh, at my gym. So it's when you're working with just two people. So you've got two clients that you're working with at the same time. And I like that because that's an example of, hey, can me and my friend come work out? Can my wife come with me to work out? Can my, uh, can my, my friend while they're in town come and join us for a workout? And you say, okay, well, yeah, I'm going to charge X amount for you and for a second person, I'm going to charge a little bit more. So you're going to pay less than two personal training sessions, but I'm still making more than just one. So that's shared or partner semi-private, sometimes it's called. And then there's small group. And usually small group is about three to five people that you'd be working with at a time. There are mid-sized groups, which are considered about six to 12. And there are large groups, which would be more than 12. And that could be the entire jujitsu studio. It could be the entire football program. It can be the entire yoga group class. But that group class is almost like, I'm not just teaching yoga for you to follow. I'm teaching for you to learn to teach and learn and experience beyond doing the exercise, beyond learning the pose, beyond understanding the, the movements in your soccer drills, but being able to learn it as if you were going to teach it, because if you can learn it as if you're going to teach it, and then you practice teaching it, most likely you will learn it better. And your group training is going to be, uh, it, it's already popular, but it's going to be fun for your clients as well. And in the last few years, it's really increased. In fact, uh, when it came to ideas, um, the trends report back in 2010, it said that 76% of fitness professionals delivered group training programs. And that's that's pretty good out of 2,800 professionals. About 85% of fitness professionals said that they that work in commercial facilities already participated in group training. Well, that's cool. But even URSA, the International Health Racket and Sports Club Association, is the largest trade organization in the fitness industry. And they identify that although in excess of 4 million Americans subscribe to some form of personal training annually. The largest growth within the personal training sector has been group personal training. 
and not the one-on-one -on -one personal training. One-on-one -on -one personal training is still great, but we got to go through and say, you know, well, what are the benefits to you as a client? What are the benefits to you as a personal trainer? What are the benefits to you as a gym? And when you start pointing out those benefits, the clients, they pay less. I pay less as a client to go to a group session. Um, what's another benefit? I have other people around me that are working towards the same goals as I am. I'm developing a sense of community as I do that, working within a community, all working with effort to reach a goal. And we also see that people who work effortfully together to reach a goal increase their bonds. Well, how's that beneficial to the trainer? Well, it it's the same amount of time. You affect more people's lives. You get involved in helping people. More people get more fit, which is what we're all trying to do. And then even though they're paying less money individually, you are making more money. And that's pretty amazing. I look back at the guy who was charging $75 per person for a group. He was making $300 an hour. I know somebody that charges more than that. I know most people charge less than that. I'm not saying that, oh, there's no, you're going to have to charge $75. I don't, most people don't even charge $75 for personal training. But if that's what you're charging for personal training, drop your rate, train more people at the same time, and see if you can quadruple the amount of money that you would make in that hour. And when it's a, what's the benefit to the gym? Let's say your gyms aren't currently doing it. Well, you can get more people who are already members to think, well, this is something that I can participate in. I don't have to, to spend $100 for a session, but I can probably spend a couple of hundred dollars a week, I'm sorry, a month more just to have somebody take me through the workout. And group exercise is great, and that's probably free with your membership. But this is more specific. It's more dialed in. It is almost like learning a skill set in the process of getting fit. And that is the value of the group personal training. And there's so many values that go along with it. It's popular. You can make more money. You can affect more lives. All right. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. And that's something that you consider if, you know, we're all trying to figure out how we make it through this world in this industry and potentially make more money and affect more lives. And this could be an option that you may want to consider. All right. Thanks for listening. Like, subscribe, share with your fitness friends and family and leave a five-star review. Also, if you don't mind, go through and when you're leaving that review, leave some words in a review as well. It actually helps us when you type out, hey, this is something I appreciate about the podcast. I find it very helpful. These are the things I like about it. And if you could share that, that'd be great. You want to reach out to me, you can hit me up on Instagram at dr.rickritchie or email me rick.ritchie at nasm.org. Y'all keep inspiring people to fitness. Thanks for listening. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.